Hi everyone, Dennis Cortez here. In today's video, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different from the usual videos. A lot of people have been requesting that I do a bit more design critique, maybe talk through some of my design decisions and whatnot. And I thought that would be a good opportunity to go over something that came out today, actually. Earlier today, Stripe released their new website, their new marketing site. And if you don't know about Stripe, Stripe is a big influence in the design community or it has been in the past so it's very interesting to see some of their new design language and some of the paradigms that they came out with this time around what i'm going to be doing today is going over some of my thoughts about the website some of the new design languages that they're coming up with and kind of give my perspective on what i think about it as someone who has worked at design companies and tech startups quite a bit in my career, I can understand that there are a lot of decisions that go into these type of things that don't get seen by the public. There's a lot of stakeholders and a lot of the times designers don't really have much that they can do because they're working with constraints that they can't necessarily control and they have to make decisions based on these. So I wanna to say to take this all with a grain of salt, this is just my opinion from the outside. I can't imagine the constraints that the design team had to work with and I wanna be respectful of that, but also give my honest opinion on the website and the design language. So just wanna preface that really quick and let's get right into it. So at first, you kind of get a similar feel from the old website where there was devices on the side. There was a lot of color and gradients. So I'm happy to see that they're still continuing on with that. Immediately, what draws my attention is obviously this gradient in the background it has a nice little animation. I'm a big fan of gradients, love the animations that they're doing here. I've done a lot of animation on my personal website as well. Um, obviously not like this, but um, with like color changing backgrounds and whatnot. So big fan of this and also this glass kind of uh, UI that they have going on here. At first I thought this might be like they're doing a background blur with this rectangle here, but I don't think it is. I don't think that this is supported in browsers yet. Um, I think there's some tricks that you can do, but it's only for specific browsers and doesn't work all the time. So by digging into the code, it looks like there's nothing going on here that makes it so that you can do that. But I'm honestly not 100% sure, especially with the team that Stripe has of developers. So going back to the gradients, to be honest, this reminds me of Mac OS Big Sur, which was just announced at WWDC 2020. Obviously, I know that this was started on and worked on way before that was even released. So I can't imagine that they took any inspiration from that, but it's just cool to see that design pattern kind of come through, even from two big different companies that are working on different things at the same time. One point of critique that I do have, uh, I'm not too sure, I don't know if it's because of the browser or the version of the browser that I'm using, but this black text feels like it's out of place. It feels like this black text is supposed to be on top of the gradient, but instead you can see it's kind of overlaid over and getting cut off at kind of a weird angle. I know that Stripe's brand is this exact angle that they use, um, so I, I understand that, but it does feel like it's at an odd place. I'm sure that they played with it and tried out different things, but this still doesn't feel right to me personally. I think they maybe could have had it drawn from down here and go up, and that could have felt a little bit better. Um, or maybe going into the paragraph or, or somewhere else. But again, I understand that they've probably tried out a bunch of different ways to do this and this felt the best. So I will trust their judgment, obviously, but just a bit of feedback that I have. Another thing that I noticed right up front is the accessibility. They have really good contrast going on throughout this site. You know, they're using very dark headlines, obviously with large type but they're also being really conscious of this with their paragraphs as well. So I feel like there's a big design trend that's been going on for a couple years where designers love to make their gray text super light and it makes it very hard to read. But it's really nice to see that Stripe's kind of making sure that they're going back on that and being conscious of accessibility and the contrast that they're using in their design work. Another thing that you'll notice as you're on their site is you have these dotted semi-transparent grids, which is a really nice little effect that they're doing. You can see that the middle ones are dotted, but the ones on the outside, uh, I guess like the constraints of the grid are actually full. It's a very subtle detail that a lot of people won't notice, but I really liked that, especially as a designer. As you're going down, you can see all these animations that they have going on. 
and you might assume, well, these are probably like, you know, prototypes that are made into GIFs and then that are exported and then uploaded and put onto like a position that, you know, kind of works with the layout that they're working with. But knowing the Stripe team, I actually looked into their code and you can take a look here. It's really cool actually seeing what they can do with SVG code and animations. From what I could tell, these none of these are actually images. They're actually all SVG code. I was kind of in disbelief when I saw this terminal. You know, this looks like, you know, Photoshop with a bunch of gradients and they're doing like texture and things like that. But I went ahead and went into their code, like I said, and if you actually start clicking into these sections and figuring out where this is, let me just do this really quick. And as you see, as I open these, these are all drawn with SVGs and figures and divs and whatnot. So even down to the buttons, the keypads is what kind of really surprised me. I know it's probably like the smallest part of this. I love how they mock these up. They still feel playful in a way because they're organic and, and like clay type of material because of how they're made. It's just very impressive what the team can do here um, with all these animations. I'm not 100% sure like how this is coded, but a lot of this stuff is actually text that you can highlight too, which is really cool. A big thing to point out here, and if you can working with developers, like making your animations and your mockups and whatnot SVG is actually really great for performance and accessibility. So I highly recommend it if that's something you can do. Um, you know, if you need some guidance on that, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have, but there's a ton that you can do with code um, as you can obviously see here, which can go a long way with your marketing sites and, and performance. So again here, like these animations are all SVG and text. This is not like a GIF or anything like that. I don't know about here, but in some of the old versions of the Stripe site, you could actually like interact with this code and like change it and it would output something different. Something else I wanna point out here is the animations and also the structure of the icons. I tried playing around with this and it, it seems that these are just, they'll, they'll just animate based on like a time loop. Every now and then I thought like, you know, maybe if I hover over or click something, it'll change, but it seems like it's a time loop. And I love that they've offset them because as you're scrolling through, some of these will just like randomly animate. You can't really tell which one it's gonna be, but it adds a lot of nice little details to to it as you're working through it. It's also really nice to see some of the brand elements come through as well. I was kind of worried that you would miss out on that brand. Besides this angle, you know, now that we have this whole gradient thing going on, I was worried they would not do the, you know, kind of the blue and purple overlays that they have in some of their old brand. So it's nice to see that that still maintains here as well. This section here is probably one of my favorites. Can't remember which product that they did it for. I remember that they coded a similar thing for this for like a hero image. But what's really cool about this one is not only is all this SVG animated, but I can also interact with it. I'm assuming it's WebGL of some sort because of the 3D elements and whatnot. And it's just insane the amount of performance and like FPS holdup that they're having on this. So really subtle, nice animations. Like even if I'm not clicking on it, it still really provides a lot and visualizes a lot of the data that they're going through. Another point of feedback that I did have though, which I actually noticed going through it with my team at Mothership, uh, we were just, you know, this this came out today and we were kind of talking through some of the work that we were doing and we thought, oh, let's, let's look at the new Stripe website. A designer on my team kind of pointed out that the buttons are a bit small. I don't know how much I agree with that, but uh, you know, just getting other users' perspectives, like he, he said that he didn't even notice that there was a button here. It kind of took him a second because of the shape of it. I guess maybe because it looks kind of like maybe like a tab or something, maybe making the buttons a bit bigger. Um, but I remember that they used to only have links for a lot of these with just an arrow. So I think it's a good improvement that they're actually adding like background around these as well. So I was looking at the rest of their site a bit more and it looks like the only ones that have been redone as far as I could tell is the uh, products pages. So if I went go to company, go to about like I just did, you'll see that this is kind of uh, their old brand, their old website. Oh, it looks like terminal is old too, but I know I did look at a couple of these and they were newer. So they're probably rolling these out um, little by little, uh, which you can see here on this connect one, they already have this one. And again, like the animations here are incredible, like on this gradient, um, they are even showing like a whole user flow and like data path that they're using with Shopify, which is amazing. 
um, with DoorDash as well. Uh, I think they actually animate the driver and everything here, which is just incredible. Like the performance of this. If you were trying to do this in a GIF, this would not be great. It's really cool to see how much they can do with code here. But if we keep scrolling down, uh, it doesn't look like these are animated, but a detail to notice is that this color scheme is actually different from the home page. And I assume it's to go with this connect like sub pages. So I would assume that all these pages throughout this section um, are probably targeted towards that, that color scheme. So like again, as you go in here, like you can select this text and actually copy it and, and interact with it, which is something that you don't usually get from websites nowadays. Uh, a lot of stuff, you, you just have like static GIFs that people put and you can't really do much with it. It's really nice to see how much they can push code and the capabilities of it on something like a marketing site. I feel like we focus so much on product design um, and the performance of that, but it's really nice to see the elements of the brand kind of get pushed a bit um, in terms of development. love this stuff again just like building this stuff with code is incredible uh, I wish I had the talent to do this stuff um, obviously I'm not full-time developer but I would love to kind of dive into how do they build this stuff a bit more so I won't spend too much time on the rest of these um, but just really quick we can go over them again billing it looks like this one has the new scheme as well and they have sub pages that you can dive into so Obviously on some of these sub pages, they're not gonna go all out with a lot of these animations and whatnot because they're not really useful for that. But on these main pages, it does seem like they really put a lot of emphasis there. So again, you can see like data breakdowns and whatnot and how it works. And the animations are again, all SVG and text. So very impressive. I, I really, really love how crisp and, and just fluid all of these seem because, they're, because of their implementation. Even this, like animating invoices, it's such a good idea. It just like makes a lot of these images and, and illustrations not just be some random static image that doesn't really provide a lot. Like they can use animations to show a lot of the advantages that they're kind of wanting a user to have. Just going through these a bit more. Uh, a lot of these I actually haven't seen yet. I've only, only kind of skimmed the home page and a couple of the sub pages, just kind of at a high level. I love the color schemes that they have as well, especially green and yellow. I feel like I don't really see that. You get a lot of purple and blue, which they have on their other screens, but you know, yellow and green is definitely not something that you're seeing in a startup nowadays. So I, I love the variety that they're bringing to each of these pages and it's very impressive because none of them feel like off-brand whatsoever. They still feel like they're on-brand with the new site. Again, another page that, that hasn't done that, but, but I'm sure they're working on it. I'm sure they focused on the ones that are most important to them for right now and which ones kind of drive the most traffic and revenue, and then they're probably switching off to the other ones and kind of being able to take the time to rethink those a lot. Um, because there's already a lot of work that goes into these. Oh God, I love this page. I remember when it first came out. I, I am just in love with it. Uh, like I said, the one thing that bothers me is this. I, I don't know if it's my browser, but this kind of seems like a bug to me. I feel like you would put that on the entire block of text, not just this right here. It definitely feels like a bug to me, but yeah, overall, a uh, really great website. I love seeing companies like Stripe come out with new design languages and see how they push and innovate uh, how we as designers kind of work. It's cool to see how this is going to influence over the next couple months. I'm sure you're going to see a lot of Stripe copycats uh, as we usually tend to see. So but yeah, really great work to the Stripe team. 
Uh, I hope this video was enjoyable to you. Uh, let me know if you want more videos like this. I didn't really structure this one too much, but I can definitely kind of work on structuring this a bit more if that's uh, interesting to you. So let me know if this is a type of video that you'd like to see. Maybe if there's something I didn't cover that you would like to see. If there's more feedback that I can give or, you know, maybe a different layout for this, let me know. Um, I can also start doing it for people's portfolios as well, which I know has been requested. So yeah, hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, make sure to leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one.